The Lightning Process LP is a three-day personal training program developed by British osteopath Phil Parker. It claims to be beneficial for various conditions, including chronic fatigue syndrome, depression and chronic pain. The Lightning Process is not recommended by the NHS for the treatment of chronic fatigue syndrome. Developed in the late 1990s, it aims to teach techniques for managing the acute stress response that the body experiences under threat. The course aims to help recognize the stress response, calm it and manage it in the long term. It also applies some ideas drawn from neurolinguistic programming, as well as elements of life coaching. The approach has raised some controversy. It is trademarked. Topic. Description The lightning process comprises three group sessions conducted on three consecutive days, lasting about 12 hours altogether, conducted by trained practitioners. According to its developer, Phil Parker, the program aims to teach participants about the acute stress response the body experiences under threat. It aims to help trainees spot when this response is happening and learn how to calm it. Techniques based on movement, postural awareness and personal coaching are intended to modify the production of stress hormones. Participants practice a learnt series of steps to habituate the calming method. The rationale for the program draws on ideas of osteopaths Andrew Taylor Still and J.M. Littlejohn regarding nervous system dysregulation and addressing clients' needs in a holistic manner rather than focusing solely on symptoms. It also incorporates ideas drawn from neuro-linguistic programming and life coaching. A basic premise is that individuals can influence their own physiological responses in controlled and repeatable ways. Such learned emotional self-regulation, it is suggested, could help overcome illness and improve well-being. If the method is practiced consistently, Parker advocates attending the training course in order to gain a full understanding of the tools in a safe and supportive context. He also lays emphasis on the trainee playing an active role in recovery. The course is framed as a fully participatory training, not a passive treatment or set of answers given to a patient. He claims that the program has helped to resolve various conditions including depression, panic attacks, insomnia, drug addictions, chronic pain and multiple sclerosis. The program has also been used with chronic fatigue syndrome. Topic. Criticism and support There has been criticism of the cost of the three-day course. There has also been criticism of the claimed benefits see also below. John Greensmith, of the British advocacy group ME Free for All, stated, We think their claims are extravagant. If patients get better, they claim the success of the treatment. But if they don't, they say the patient is responsible. Some chronic fatigue syndrome patient support groups have strongly objected to the perceived implication that the disease has psychological causes. However, the Lightning Process website states that it is a neurophysiological approach and that it considers CFS, ME to be a physical illness. Nigel Hawkes writing for the BMJ describes the Lightning Process as being secretive about its methods, lacks overall medical supervision, and has a cultish quality because many of the therapists are former sufferers who deliver the program with great conviction. And that, some children who do not benefit have said that they feel blamed for the failure. Some people have claimed rapid cures for long-standing illnesses. Prominent advocates of the process include Esther Ranson, whose daughter has coliac disease and chronic fatigue syndrome, British journalist Patrick Strudwick, French dancer Chris Marcus, and singer Laura M. Vula. Topic. Advertising Standards Authority Ruling In 2011 Hampshire Trading Standards requested that the UK Advertising Standards Authority ASA give a ruling on the website www.lightningprocess.com, arguing that the information on the site was misleading in four areas. The ASA upheld two of the four challenges. 
they concluded that although there seemed to be some evidence of participant improvement during trials conducted, the trials were not controlled, the evidence was not sufficient enough to draw robust conclusions, and more investigation was necessary. Consequently, the website's claims at the time were deemed misleading. Topic. Research A registered clinical trial UK Smile Pilot Study was conducted in England at Bristol University, with results published in 2017. While the results are promising its use is not recommended as of 2017 by the National Health Services in the United Kingdom, a qualitative study on experiences of the course among a group of young people with chronic fatigue syndrome was published in 2003. Topic. Public reaction to research Esther Crawley said that, I never expected it would work, and that, this is an important study as it provides another treatment approach that some may find helpful. However, while these results are promising, further research is needed to establish which aspects of the process are helpful, whether it is an effective treatment on its own, and whether it could be used to help more severely affected patients. Research into chronic fatigue syndrome is often a target of criticism. The SMILE study received some public criticism for recruiting children when adult subjects are available. The study was approved by the National Research Ethics Service. The pediatrician supervising the study, Esther Crawley, has commented, If the lightning process is dangerous, as they say, we need to find out. They should want to find it out, not prevent research. Results of the study by Crawley were publicized at the Science Media Center in September 2017. An editorial on its own presentation of the results of the SMILE study stated, if you had only read the headlines for the CFS, ME story you may conclude that the treatment tested at Bristol might be worth a try if you are blighted by the illness, when in truth the author said repeatedly that the findings would first have to be replicated in a bigger trial. Reactions to their briefing were stronger than expected. It was the criticism from within the scientific community that we had not anticipated. The briefing invited four psychologists to make comments on the study, who were mild in their reactions, while the commentary on the September 28, 2017 article evoked detailed, well-referenced but anonymous criticisms of the SMILE study and the lightning process in the comments section. Dorothy Bishop from Oxford University commented that the gains for patients in this study seem solid. However, while the patient allocation and statistical analysis of the trial appear to be done to a high standard, the intervention that was assessed is commercial and associated with a number of warning signs. The lightning process appears based on neurolinguistic programming, which has long been recognized as pseudoscience. 